Hello, it's been a while. We have been hard at work making Pack even better for you. And over the past couple of months, we released a bunch of new features that make Pack more flexible and friendly than ever, including the long awaited inline text editing. But before we get into it, a lot of new people hit these videos. So, in case you haven't heard of it, Pack is an open source visual editor for React that you can use to create your own page builder using your own components. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the inline text editing and other key new features. However, there are a lot of very cool ones that I'm not really going to mention here, and that's because of time. So be sure to check out the release post in the description below for the full list, or ask me about them in the comments. If enough people are interested, we might make another video diving deeper into those two. This is a massive one. With inline text editing, you can finally edit text directly in the canvas. All you have to do is just click on the text and start typing right away. This works with text, text area, and text custom fields. And to enable it, it's super simple. Let me show you how to do it right now. So here we have a very basic heading component that renders a text field value. To make this text field value inline editable, all you have to do is just go to the field config and set the new content editable property to true. That's it. With this done, we can go back into the editor and just click on the text content on the heading and update the value directly in the canvas. This feels so satisfying to finally be able to click on the value that you want to edit and edit it right there. That I'm just so happy that we are able to finally provide this feature to you. This works the same way for text area fields or custom text fields. Just go into the field config and set the content editable property to true. Resizable sidebars. This one is one I've been wanting in Pack for the longest time, so I'm super excited we finally added it. Once you update to Pack 20 or above, you will be able to drag the borders of your sidebars to resize them to your heart's content. There is nothing you need to do, it works completely out of the box. The best part is that this resize preference will be stored on your browser, so you won't really lose it between page refreshes. And it is super useful when you start having very long content on the sidebars, like when you have a very long text area on your field sidebar, for example. It is a very simple change, but a massive win for user experience. It really does feel that satisfying. So if you haven't already, I would recommend you update to the latest version just to try it out. This one sounds fancy, but it is not that complicated. By default, Pack adds an overlay on top of your components that block any interaction with the elements in the side. So if you have a button instead of your component, you won't really be able to click that button. With component overlays, you can cut out that overlay from specific elements in your components so that you can still interact with them. This is super useful when you want to add some kind of component that has some editable content that you want to see, but that you can't see until you interact with the component itself, like a tabs component or an accordion, right? You need to click on certain things to actually see the content that you're editing. For example, here we have an accordion that has a slot inside. However, if we go into the editor, we will see that the accordion is closed, and because of that overlay, I can't click to expand it. So right now, the slot that is inside is really useless. It doesn't let me add other components inside. What I need is to be able to expand this accordion so that I can target that slot, and to do that, I need to remove that overlay. To cut out an overlay from an element, all you have to do is pass its ref to the register overlay portal function. This function does exactly that. It receives the ref of any element and it cuts the overlay around it. So in my case, what I'm going to do is first get the ref of the summary element using useRef and then pass it to the function inside an effect. And quick note here, register overlay portal returns a cleanup function, so be sure to return it from the effect, just as I'm doing here, to avoid any memory leaks you could potentially have. But that's it, with this done, we can go back into the editor and we will see that the overlay doesn't show on top of the element any longer. In my case, it doesn't show on top of the summary element, so I can now click it, expand it, and add any elements I want inside, which is pretty cool. But the process is pretty much the same for any other element you could have. Basically, you want to get its ref somehow and then pass it to the function one way or another. In this case, I use an effect, but you could potentially use a React 19 ref callback function, for example. Speaking about overlays, overlay overrides allow you to completely change the overlay that pack renders on top of a component in the editor. This is super useful for making that overlay better match the rest of your application styling, but also to add any kind of logic you might need to execute whenever a component gets selected or hovered in the editor. To use it, all you have to do is define a component overlay override function that returns any component you need for your overlays. 
For example, here we have a simple one that makes the overlay green. As you can see, the function itself receives the hover flag, which will be true if the component is being hovered, and a selected flag, which will be true if the component is selected, and the ID of the component where this overlay is currently rendering. In this case, I am returning a div and making sure that it's taking full width and height on top of the component and that it has a green border whenever the component is actually selected and a green background whenever the component is actually hovered. I'm also lowering the opacity a little bit so that I can actually see the component underneath it. Once we define this, we should be able to see it in the editor. So if we actually navigate back to the editor now and we hover on any of the components, we will see that it indeed shows that border we define for it whenever we select something and the background we define for it whenever we hover on anything. Now, in this case, I'm just returning a div, but you could actually return any component you want. For example, you might want to return a component that has some internal state or that does some fetching or that executes some effects, which makes this API and this override very powerful and useful for a lot of very cool use cases. That's all we're going to be looking at today. Now, we took a while to upload this video, but that's because we were sorting out some major stuff that are in the works for Pack and that we think you and the community will love but we can't really share that much yet, so stay tuned. That said, we're going to be uploading more videos more frequently. I have a lot of content planned, so be sure to subscribe to not miss anything and see what we were working on. Also, remember that I didn't go through every feature we released since the last video, so please be sure to check out the release post in the description below to see all of the things we have added. Finally, if you still have questions about Pack, these features, or any other thing, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. I always read every comment and respond to every question. And if you're enjoying Pack, please support us by leaving a star on GitHub. My name is Fede, thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.